Alright, three, two. Go! <laughs> I don't know what you're stopping for. I don't know, three. I got something in my eye. Huh? I said that I got something in my eye. Just go. Alright, three, two, one. Welcome to another episode of Chalk Talk. We're here uh, today. We're talking about. It always takes ninety minutes to start. Roughly. Good old, yes, yes. Our apparently. setups are longer than the video. It's okay. It's the process, yeah. right? Hollywood production on Zoom. <laughs> it costs a lot of money to get this up and running. Just a twenty fifteen laptop. Welcome to another episode of Chalk Talk. I think I've already said that. Welcome to another episode of Chalk Talk. Or if you haven't been here, welcome, as I always say, for some reason. Yes. Oh, yes. And yes, if you're new, welcome. And if you're you're a, a past time old comer, if you've been here before, welcome as well. They've already clicked off. It's okay. <laughs> right. So today's episode. For that one. Yeah, today's Bristol episode Myers is about Squibb. Bristol, Bristol Myers Squibb. Myers Squibb. Ticker symbol. Oh. Ticker symbol BM. Y. I almost said W. B M Y. B M Y. Yeah, this is our first uh not blue chip stock, but our first like I don't want to call it boring stock, but non tech hype stock. And so is it our first pharmaceutical hype. stock? Our first pharmaceutical or biopharmaceutical stock. Every other episode's been about either crypto, tech stocks, or just like a hype stock like AFC mm. or yeah, GNS or yeah, this is our first like non I'm gonna just say it non boring ish stock. Not a boring stock, but it's not like an exciting it's not we're not talking about Tesla. We're not talking about GME. Anyways, I'm still interested in it. It's a legitimate investment from what I see. Rambling. Random and general. it's uh it's it's on my uh it's in my list for my <laughs> port my portfolio whenever I can afford to buy a legitimate portfolio whenever that is soon. But yeah, ticker symbol B M Y Bristol Myers Squid is an American multinational pharmaceutical and biopharmaceutical company headquartered in Princeton, New Jersey, and founded in eighteen fifty eight. So, yeah, let's talk a little bit about the company yeah, um, and maybe some of the things that have been in the news recently uh, before we dive For into sure. the stock talk. Okay, okay. So, how about this one? USDA, well, US FDA approves Bristol-Myers Squibb, uh, and I'm already going to say everything incorrectly, just a preface to this. Mm -hmm. uh, Reblos... <laughs> Reblozil. Yeah. What uh? What article is this? <laughs> Reblozil. It's um. It's from. It's actually one of their press releases from their website. Hold on, I can send okay. it to you if you like. Would you like me to send you the link? Um, no, I. It's it's fine. I, just okay. The video. Rebloz, uh Reblozil, <laughs> as a first line treatment for anemia in adults with lower risk myelodysplastic syndromes who who may require transfusions and so basically to sum it up uh this drug helps to um you know create red blood cells so you don't have to get a transfusion you know because anemia is you know forms of red blood cell loss or disfiguration or other mm -hmm. so that was posted on uh August 28th, 2023. So that was something yeah. that happened in the news. And I'm pretty sure that it impacted the stock. I, I don't know if it impact, impacted it positively, but good news is supposed to positively affect. But, well, but, yeah, go ahead. Oh, uh, yeah, I don't know. I was saying from what I've seen, most biopharmaceutical and pharmaceutical companies are, are down. Yeah, so... Apparently, right I was also reading about the Inflection Reduction Act uh, signed in August of 2022. 
And basically, the IRA seeks to lower prescription drug costs by allowing Medicare to negotiate prices with drug companies, put an inflation cap on drug prices, and lower out-of-pocket expenses for Medicare recipients. It also extends Affordable Care Act subsidies for three years. So together, the CBO estimates these measures will save the federal government $173 billion through 2031. Um, and basically, this is the government trying to curb these pharmaceutical companies uh, for the rising rates of their, of their drugs, like EpiPen prices skyrocketed, you know, things like that. So I don't know. You know, they say that they don't really want government intervention. Mm -hmm. um, but if uh, if prices for drugs are just going through the roof, then someone needs to come and put a cap on it. Like if you need money, like diabetes medication, I heard is been a problem. EpiPen situation has been a problem. You know, all these like life saving drugs, and they're becoming out of reach for the you know common consumer. Then. Mm -hmm. What's the point of creating medicines if they're not allowed, if they're unattainable financially, you know? So I guess that's what the idea of the law is. But then there's also that, well, once you let government start regulating, you know, how far does it go? How far does the slippery slope go? I guess there's some like pros and cons or like protests to it. But yes. Yeah, that's that's probably affecting the pharma stocks too, <laughs> even if they have good news. Yeah. Um, also, too, I, I I was reading a big problem is that um, a lot of people are going for more of the the generic, um, more more competition from generic. Um, yeah. Well, historically, yeah, people patients. have have gone towards name brand because they, in, you know, psychologically, that's what you can trust if it's mostly known and trusted. But with these skyrocketing, like the skyrocketing prices, yeah, people are turning more towards generic because what else can they do? And so a lot of these big name yeah. companies are hurting because generic offers a price alternative. Yeah. I mean, I get it. I could see if it was like... Um... I don't know what I'm trying to say here. I could see if it was like something that you had to take like on a consistent basis and it's just like the cheaper option. Mm -hmm. But like with Bristol, with like Bristol Myers and like the type of stuff that they're producing is like life saving type of shit. Like, I mean, yeah, some of it's not so life saving. Like they have, they have like a, what's it called? Mm, medication for, uh, not not so life threatening like hepatitis, rheumatoid arthritis, diabetes. I mean, diabetes can be life threatening, but a lot of their other other um, things are like uh, for multiple multiple sclerosis, cancer, HIV, AIDS, cardiovascular disease. Uh, I mean, diabetes. Like I said, is not as it's not as um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's not as bad as cancer, but it's still can be life threatening, of course. If it's not, yeah, I mean that's true. Away. As long as they don't have the patent on those medicines, then other people can, re other companies can reproduce them and make more generic, more affordable forms. I mean, yeah, even if the medicines that they're they're making are life saving, and you know they're the only ones that can, they have the patent and they're the only ones that can produce it, they legally have the rights to that. Who says that they can jack up the prices to, you know, you know, illogical numbers where people who need it can't afford it? What's the point? That's that's against like the medical practice, isn't it? I don't know. I'm not in I mean, medical guess... practice, but I feel like that would be against the doctor's code, at least in my mind, that makes sense. You know, but because yeah. they they don't have patents to all these people are like, well, if you're going to charge. If you're gonna charge like five thousand, we're gonna slash that price in half so make it more affordable. Which, in my opinion, I'm like, well, competition is competition. You don't need monopolies on a pharmaceutical market. True. That's why I also think a lot of these drug companies work with each other 
rather than against each other like they do in other industries company companies work against each other but it seems like in the pharmaceutical industry and the biopharmaceutical industry they tend to work together and against yeah like i mean for example well, yeah for example who like for example in this in this article in Reuters that came out uh, September 14th uh, this was actually big news. I saw it uh, when I was looking at the stock um, on my brokerage. They had this article, and uh, this one's by Reuters. It came out September 14th. It said, Britain Miles Squibb said on Thursday, this past Thursday, the 14th, it plans to double the number of treatments it is testing in clinical trials with a focus on cell therapies over the next 18 months as it tends to increase with increasing generic competition, like we talked about, for its mm -hmm. two top-selling drugs, the drug maker, we're going to get into what uh, I just mentioned, mm -hmm. which currently has six candidates in trials, will advance six more in its research pipeline, including three cell therapies that target immune system disorders and different types of cancer. The New York-based company has been pressured by declining demand for two of its top drugs, the blood cancer treatment, Revlimid, and blood thinner, Eliquis, which Eliquis is very popular. They have commercials literally constantly throughout the day. Now, Eliquis is created by Ritzelmeyer Squid, but also is a partner with Pfizer. That was getting to my point. They have a partnership with Pfizer. Now you think like, oh, well, they're in the same industry. They're technically in competition, but they're working together and they're doing research together, which is also ironic. Um, now to tie this into the stock, um, Bristol Myers Squid is pretty much in its 52-week low and Pfizer is in its 52-week low this past week. So it's kind of interesting to see that these companies are... Uh, Doing a lot of work. They're really big, 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 big companies. I mean, Pfizer and so Myers Squid, both of these companies are over a hundred plus billion dollar companies. And uh, their stocks aren't doing so great. Um, and Wall Street's really hitting them hard because two of their top um, two of their top uh, medications are aren't doing so great with new generic competition. People are going with the cheaper option. Uh, I mean, I could say I'm not a doctor, but blood thinner medication. If, okay. The idea is that if it's approved by the FDA, it's good to go. I have my own feelings about the FDA, but that's neither here nor there. Ultimately, mm -hmm. if these generic companies can also produce similar drugs that do this, that do have the same results at a cheaper price, still approved by the FDA, then it is what it is. It's not like if people can't afford what Bristol Myers and Pfizer are offering, then if it's the exact same with a different name and label still approved by the FDA, why not? You know, I just think that medicine should be affordable. And even if there's a yeah, name definitely. attached to it, like Bristol Myers Squibb, it doesn't give them an excuse. I'm not saying I know the price of the drug. I'm just saying medical competition is medical competition. But now... Here's my other thing with it. With this whole race to produce all these other drugs and, um, you know, against generic companies, just smaller companies, then my fear is the, the quality of what they're producing. Because there's a, there's a historical factor in many companies, especially involved in American pharma pharmaceutical or otherwise, using cutting corners mm -hmm. to save money to keep, retain their own capital and then like oh. things get slipped under the rug and people like the poor man so to speak has to suffer from in, like faulty drugs and again like i said I, I have my own opinions of the fda but i don't really want to get into that per se yeah so it also mentions that bristol and partner pfizer blood thinner like i'll talk about Earlier, Senator Eliquis was also on the uh, list of 10 drugs that will be subject to the first ever price negotiations by the U.S. Medicare Health Program. Mm -hmm. So, 
they're, they're, it's for price negotiation. So these companies are negotiating now who are with like uh, health insurance companies and Medicare yeah. programs. And, um, and also uh, outside of that, kind of more in the business end um, of the company, outside of talking about just the actual drugs and all of it behind it is the company um, recently received regulatory approval for a new cell therapy manufacturing facility here where we mm -hmm. live. Well, not exactly where we live, but in the same state in Devons, Massachusetts. And yeah. Bristol said it will continue expanding its manufacturing capacity. Bristol, which has already approved, has two approved cell therapies in the U.S. Mm -hmm. um, Bryanzi and Asema, Abesma. Sorry, these are some strange. So medications always have really, really strange names. Abesma. I don't know. I can speak more than one language and I can't even pronounce that. Targeting different blood cancer indicators. Set up plans to continue development or treatment of other diseases such as lupus and multiple sclerosis. The, dr the drug maker is hosting an R&D on Thursday, this upcoming uh, Thursday, which is what? I believe the 21st. Mm. Uh, where executives are expected to provide details on the company's research strategy. So, okay. Well, you know what? That kind of goes in hand because isn't it in Devon's Mass? I think I saw something yeah. about it in Devon's Mass. But it also, has, um, also Samsung, it's like, have you heard about the um, the expand, expansion agreement uh, with Samsung yes, Biologics? Today. Yeah, yeah, so Samsung Biologics and Bristol Myers Squibb had an existing manufacturing agreement for, for commercial years. antibody cancer drug. Uh, so under the new and they're South Korean. Sam yeah, under the new agreement, Samsung Biologics will provide drug substance manufacturing for an antibody dr cancer drug substance at the company's latest and largest bio bio manufacturing facility, Plant Four in Sand Sandgo. Okay, I'm so sorry. Song, Songdo, South Korea. Um, Samsung Biologics is fully integrated end-to-end -end CDMO service provider offering seamless development and manufacturing solutions from cell line development to final aseptic fill finish, as well as laboratory testing support for biopharmaceutical products they manufacture. So... This will further advance the company's standing as uh, Samsung Biologics fully completed Plant 4, which will further advance the company's standing as the world's largest manufacturing facility at a single site, holding over 400, uh, 604 kiloliters total capacity and has announced plans to construct Plant 5, which will be operational in April 2025. So they're expanding. I know the stock is hurting, but everything says that they plan on uh. pumping out more. Yeah, I mean, they're headquartered in New Jersey, but they're heavy here in Massachusetts. They have, in Devons, they have an office in Cambridge, Mass, which where that's where Harvard and MIT is, if you didn't know. Mm -hmm. uh, and then they have that massive, 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 massive office building in uh, in Boston, right off the side of the Zakem Bridge. And they're just adding more offices and laboratories. So, and it, it's already a huge company. Yeah. But um, so, yeah, now we have talked a little bit about what the company is doing, who they are, what they're doing, companies that they, they work with. They're working with a lot of other biopharmaceutical and pharmaceutical companies on that, dozens yeah. of drugs. That, um, that price negotiation, I think everybody's waiting to see what happens with that. Like I said, with, with government intervention, they don't really know how it's going to go. And if it's one of the first, right? Yeah, so if they get approval like for or some... Oh yeah, I th that's going to be a crap ton of money if they get a some sort of like negotiation for Medicare. Yeah, and it will it will set the foundation for future you know price haggling between companies and the government. So mm -hmm. or Medicaid or whomever. But Medicaid, Medicare. We got to see what happens with that. Yeah. But I think it's all good news, especially. I think I ultimately think. that means that it's bullish. If it's at a 52-week low for both Pfizer 
and Bristol, mm -hmm. and they're you know, negotiating prices. Right now, it's just a little circus show, but it's, yeah. it's bullish. If you're looking at the stock, <laughs> in my uh, in my opinion, it's a buy all day, buy 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 all day. Uh, so yeah, let's get into it. Um, second part of the of the episode, the stock portion. Talk a little bit about the company, some articles, stock and, uh, portions. Stock talk. <laughs> yeah, on talk. How much? How much is it? How much is its price? What's it at? Fifty two week low. Uh. 50, well, currently, the stock is at, so yeah, the current price, uh, as of this past week, it closed out at 59.03. Um, the 52-week low is, mm -hmm. the 52-week right. low is 58.86. So, yeah. it's, uh, it is 17 cents short of its 52-week low as it sits. It's fifty two week high is eighty one forty four, so we're roughly I mean, twenty five dollars. Looking at it on Yahoo Finance, it's like short term, mid term, long term, all bearish, but it's it's listed as undervalued. So I was kind yeah, of on the money. It is undervalued. That. We all know the market doesn't run off of of company performance anyway. It's done. Right? I don't know. I think it's done. It only, I think it's in a it topsy turvy up. world now. It runs off of news. Mm. The market needs a catalyst. It just doesn't run off of constant numbers and finances. It runs off of catalysts. I mean, of course, yeah, good earnings reports make things move, but like you need catalysts. Okay. If there's no catalysts, it just gets shorted. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what I mean. That's, it has to, it has to, even if positive catalyst, FDA approval, short. Like, as soon as the economy oh. turns around, maybe, maybe things will have more of a balance. I don't know, but it, it just seems like. Oh, um, mm -hmm. Hello to the casino. This is the stock market. Uh, so, after yeah, no, some I'm... technical difficulties, we're back. Hey, how's it going? Okay. So, yeah. Yeah, so no, tell us. Gonna... What what did you pull up? What's the article you pulled up? Oh no! So getting into the second part of the Bristol Myers Squid. Um. Yeah. Uh. Well, as you know, as you know, well, I'm, everybody at home, but you know, we're shooting in this in two parts. So two thing, two interesting things just happened actually, literally as I was sitting here with Bristol Myers Squid stock. Mm -hmm. As of last night, originally, I would have said and told you that the 52-week low was 58.86. But as okay, we sit okay. here, we saw a new 52-week low of 58.33. Then another interesting thing happened while that was happening. Bazinga put out on uh, my brokerage. So I'm sure it's probably this article is on multiple brokerages. Uh, mm -hmm. You can find it. We'll probably put a link in this description. Zynga today, 49 minutes ago, today, Monday, mm -hmm. September 28th, Bristol Myers Squibb, New York Stock Exchange, ticker symbol BMY, short mm -hmm. percentage of float has fallen 17.97% since the last report. The company recently reported that it has 43.76 million shares sold short which is 2.1% of all regular shares that are available for trading. Based on its trading vol volume, which is trading volume is, I actually have that number. 200, uh, no, sorry, 2 million? Three, two, it has two a four? three month, the three month. Oh, okay, that's what you're talking about. It has a, uh, that's what I'm looking for. It has a three month, um, Trading average. Every stock has it. Um, I think it's like two million. So the short shares equal to the average amount of shares traded per day. So based off of that, it would take traders four point four six days to, to cover their short positions on average. And then it goes into why short interest matters and what short selling is, and then here. Um, maybe we can have that for later. It has a, we have, I have a uh, 
chart here. Maybe I can send it to you. It's a, it says it has a short interest graph, three months. And uh, it had last week over just over 50 million shares sold short. And we are new at our 52 week low as of. About Wait, minutes you ago. said 50 million? 50, yeah, uh, about three weeks ago, it had just over 50 million shares sold short. Uh, now, apparently, what's being um, reported is somewhere around two and a half million, which is the daily average of shares traded per day. So the which average is the daily average? super high. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's like an average amount of short short uh interest and short shares. It's like yeah average. So so basically they're saying Bristol Myers Squibs um fall to its fifty two week low is not necessarily an indicator of being shorted. Yeah, well it was just shorted to death last month. Okay. <laughs> it had like sh uh it had like twenty percent short interest on it, which is pretty high. Uh, that's interesting because that's that was also approved. the month where it got FDA approved, right? For its new drug. So in the yeah. same day in the same month of its catalyst, it's the same month where it was extremely shorted. Is that what you're saying? Just yeah. just to conf confirmation. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> but I think what a lot of people do, a lot of traders do, and especially institutions is They'll buy shares and they'll short it or they'll lend the shares out to be shorted. And then when it gets to that price that they want, instead of closing their positions, they just cover their positions and they keep the shares so they can get it at a cheaper price. Instead of just buying the common stock and being like, this is my position or just simply waiting and hoping it goes down. Okay. I know some people, just because you're short a stock doesn't necessarily mean that like, you think it's like a crappy stock or a crappy company. I mean, mm -hmm. a lot most mo a lot of the time it does, but I know some people in some institutions, they'll they'll do that. They'll be like, all right, let's, let's see if <laughs> we can get it at a cheaper price. They want to get it at Bristol Myers Squid at $58 instead of $70, $75. Bucks. Yeah, today it opened at... Fifty nine oh four, according to Yahoo Finance. Yep. So, oh, and now <laughs> currently trading at fifty eight sixty five. You know, <clears throat> it could also just be like an overall indicator of. Um, I I don't know if I mentioned this last, but overall indicator of where the economy is. You know. Yeah, the whole market's down. Um, yeah, on in my. What I'm looking at right now, like my watch list right now, the only thing that's really up is Apple at one point, what literally one point zero seven percent. Everything else is down. Like Tesla's down like three percent right now, which three percent doesn't sound like a lot of money, but three percent on a, a company that has a six hundred billion dollar market cap is a lot of money. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. like nineteen billion dollars, <laughs> but. Um, so yeah, getting more into Bristol Myers squid stock, uh, as you know, and everyone at home knows we're literally at the 52 week low as we speak. Mm -hmm. Um, the 52 week high is 81.44. So we're roughly what 23 and change ish, um, yeah. from the 52 week high. Yeah. And um, it, I can see that all the performance short, mid and long are all bearish. But it's considered undervalued. I mean, that just oh. means it's a buy. I'm, it, it, I don't understand when they make these forecasts, but so if it's undervalued, um, it's a buy, right? Yeah, it's definitely undervalued. I just think that a lot of institutions, when they look at the numbers, they don't like what they see. But biotech, biopharma stocks are kind of really similar to tech stocks in the sense of they burn a lot of money and what investors usually like to see is net cash flow. Like, oh, mm -hmm. the company that tends to net cash flow, it's healthy. All right, cool, that's attractive to investors. But if you go into, uh, which I was gonna get into later, if you go into some of Bristol Myers, like recent numbers, they're not the greatest because they've been expanding so much, like yeah. we said it earlier in the video, because they're burning money because it's, they're trying to get extra uh, medications and drugs in the pipeline. They're researching on multiple other ones. They're trying to get multiple other things 
uh, medications approved. They're opening multiple other laboratories and offices. So they're spending money because they're growing. Yeah. But Makes sense. I don't know. I guess I don't know. That's just me. That's that's what I see. I think it's just an excuse to short then. It's just like, all right, let's just short it so we can make <laughs> some money. And art let's artificially make trouble so we can ride the wave up. <laughs> um, but, um, you know what? That's that's how the market's been working, so Yeah. I would have some yeah, we're in some a, cash I would throw a little bit in. Yeah, well, I mean we're in a bear market right now, so um so some other things about the stock is um uh, other than the actual price itself, the free float, it's really big. It's uh two point zero nine billion. Mm -hmm. So it has available to trade is just over two billion shares. The free float market cap, so the market cap of all the shares combined with the price is equal to one hundred twenty three just over one hundred and twenty three billion as we speak. Um, pretty healthy. Uh, that's just get uh, a large cap stock. Usually anything over like 20 to like 30 to 40 is considered mid. Anything under like 10 is considered like small. And then once you get into like the lower millions, you're, you're a micro cap and small cap. So this is considered a large cap stock. Um, did you pay a dividend? I don't know if you saw uh, the dividend. I do. Is it, 2.280 and the dividend yeah. yield percentage is 3.86%. So this is considered undervalued by multiple analysts and Yahoo yeah. Finance. That's more than pre 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 pandemic uh, savings accounts. So yeah, yeah, exactly. This is this is considered undervalued by about 20 to 25% and they have a yield dividend yield of 3.86%. So, I mean, you could easily make 20, I mean, let's not say easily, it's the market, but based off of what we see and based off of like everything, yeah. this isn't, this, this should be an easy 25, 30% gain on what is a conservative, and in my opinion, a conservative investment, which a conservative investment is usually only like 10 to 12%. In my opinion, this is, an, in my opinion, this is an easy 20 to 30% with a dividend. Yeah, I mean, from where I'm looking, the writing's kind of on the wall. And the and valued 72-year target estimate, 3.86% dividend yield. I don't know. Another thing I noticed, too, uh, I don't know if you look at it or anybody really pays attention to it at home, but one of the big things with stocks is the P-E ratio. Mm -hmm. And... um. Sometimes I pay attention to those. Sometimes I don't. Depends on the stock. If it's a hype stock, I don't pay attention to those. If it's a tech stock, I don't pay attention to those. Every other stock, I pay okay. attention to them. Let me take everything a swig every time you say else, that. Pay attention. Every, because pay everything attention. else is kind of like... Everything else is probably going to have some like ridiculous P ratio. Because people just throw money at it. They're like, oh, Jimmy, AMC, or like Tesla and Apple, money, just money. And it, so they have super high PE ratios. But like a company like, for example, Bristol Myers Squibbs, Coca Cola, National Grid, I'm going to take a look at the PE ratio. The PE ratio here, so if anybody doesn't know what PE ratio as at home is, maybe uh, it's just the price per earnings. Um, right now, it is so. It's basically how much you have to spend technically to make a dollar per per share. So technically, you would have to spend or invest fifteen dollars in this. Now, a PE ratio of fifteen is considered solid; is decent. Um, anything over twenty is starting to get high. Fifteen is pretty decent. Anything I'd, I'd say under like well, twelve is good. Like the low low teens and like around there, anything under that is like super undervalued. So there are two PE ratios. There's the T, T, M, the trailing 12 months. So like the last four quarters, the last, in the last oh, the, you, you said the, 12 months. The T, T, M? The T, T, M? Yeah. Trailing 12 months. Now, 
then you have a second PE ratio, which mm -hmm. you have to take this one with a big grain of salt because, as as we all know, this investing is all speculative. Uh, PE ratio FWD forward. Um, it's basically what the expected earnings are. So if you notice a drop from the TTM to the to the FWD, that's a really good positive sign at its current price that that analysts and uh, institutions um, are betting that this Bristol Myers squid is going to be uh, or is very very undervalued and and or are going to have a really good earnings report in their next earnings. So that is almost half. Right now we have fifteen and seven fifteen point seven one trailing twelve months over the last four quarters. Uh, but the PE ratio on the expected earnings moving forward is seven point nine five, which is literally a little more than half. So um now there's one more other thing I wanted to point out. Uh, sorry, I'm I'm doing most of the talking here. Yeah, that's no, fine. Go um, ahead. The analysts' price target again. You got to take these with grains of salt, but they are analysts. They are the yeah. professionals, uh, especially on a stock like this. I would probably, in my personally, I would probably take a look more at the analyst stocks. Like I said, like more like the blue chip, more boring companies. Again, this isn't really boring to me. I like Bristol Myers Squid. This shit interests me. So, I, but other than that, I really wouldn't care so much. Analysts put ridiculous price targets on things, but their price targets here uh, is we have an average price analyst price target is saying seventy two dollars. Yeah, I'm looking and it says um, related research reports. A lot of them are listed as neutral. Yeah. But I always feel weird about analysts because they always, in my mind or in my, and in my opinion, they always have some sort of, you know, agenda. I don't feel like you can analyze a stock. I mean, you can, but faithful to integrity without having, with, with, while being a, a an interested party in what happens to the number of the stock. So I yeah. don't know. That's why that. Uh, I really only look at analyst stock price targets in companies like this or like a 3M or a Johnson & Johnson, Coca-Cola. I don't look at analyst price targets of like, I don't know. Well, your As price anal analyst um, price targets, you're talking about for blue blue chip stocks because they're more steady stocks. That, is that why you're saying you can trust them a little bit more in your opinion? Yeah, and more like of like the more quote unquote as I've been using boring stocks, not like the exciting like oh the Teslas and Apples and oh, the Palantir. I don't, I'm not looking at P, P ratios, especially on tech stocks because those those has ridiculous like Nvidia and AMD. They probably have like P ratios until like the hundreds. Mm -hmm. I don't like. Uh... <laughs> yeah, but this I, I don't know. Again, I mean, I agree. I agree with you, but yeah, like for the average right now, their analyst price target is seventy-two dollars, which at its current price is a twenty-three percent gain. Yeah, so, saying high. Yep, go ahead. Uh -huh. I think I'm looking at the same thing. Yeah, you see the high end, the max. Ninety, is that what you? Yeah, 90. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, okay. Yeah, fifty-three point seven four percent from the current price of fifty-eight fifty, which is being traded right now. The time of this recording, um, and I mean, it's considered a buy, right? I mean, on the other end, it said well, the other side. It said it it was bearish, but recommended rating on Yahoo Finance two point four, you know, a buy, close to a hold, but still, or maybe it's like considered a high, low buy, high hold. But I don't know. I think it's a buy. Yeah, just it has a strong game. buy. Strong buy nineteen percent, buy thirty percent, hold forty four percent, and then apparently seven percent think it's uh under underperformer based off of the uh, twenty seven analysts. So forty nine percent believe it's a buy to strong buy, and then almost the other half is basically like yeah hold. 
I mean, this is a buy for me. Like I said, maybe cost averaging, I wouldn't go like balls to the wall. Like I wouldn't take 10 grand and throw a kid in <laughs> right now. But if you had, for example, 10 grand, maybe I'd buy, you know, I'd make a few buys. But because here they have, this could drop potentially in their opinion, analyst's opinion, this could drop another 6% to $55. Mm -hmm. But Last week, that number was also at like 57. So it's dropped $2. So, but these, this is 52 week lows. I'm not sure what the stock's all time low is, but um, we are at its 52 week low. So, mm -hmm. out of the last 52 weeks, we're at the bottom. Right. If um, it tapped it already, it probably could tap it again before going up. I would have to look more in depth at the yeah, chart. Yeah. At the chart. Yeah, exactly. You'd have to see if it was a double bottom. Um, yep, let's take a look at the chart. Yep, 59. Um, Did a double bottom? It doubled, it taps a bottom, and then, you know, it looks like lower lows right now. Yeah, there are lower lows, because there was a rip, um, if you go back into the chart, from, like, this current price as we sit to, like, in 2001, it looked like in November, it hit around 53. So, 53. so we could be close to all-time lows. So and then, this company's not uh, going anywhere. It's expanding. It's just uh, sometimes that happens with stocks. But, hey, this is a great buy, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, pre, I don't know. You can consider it pre-pandemic, but 2019, yeah, I mean, it's like when I found uh, it hit forty two dollars. Hit forty two dollars in um July. Like pre pandemic. Yeah, pre pandemic two thousand nineteen. Oh. Up for debate, but yeah, forty two seventy seven in July twenty nineteen. Mm -hmm. It looks like it's been the the lowest in the last few years, or if if not, it's all time low. But yeah, I mean. Yeah, for me, this is like a $75 stock all day. Maybe they think it could tap at 53 because, like I said, in 2001, um, it hit 53.63. So, I mean, it's not far off. But I think if it were to hit, it, I think if it were to hit that, it would rebound because it just doesn't make sense for really what it, with its FDA approval and its aggressive like research. Right now, it looks oh, yeah. like it's it opening multiple locations. Yes. Yeah. Like so, office buildings. And I would say yeah. if we're in a buy phase and if it goes lower, then you're in a serious buy phase. Just my personal opinion, not financial advice. But yeah, <laughs> I'm just saying. I mean, it's like when I found Crocs and I was like, wait, Crocs is $48. What? And then I remember when you said that to me and I was like, Crocs. Of all shoes, and now I can't go anywhere without seeing children and, and Crocs much, mostly. And how much is now a Crocs stock? Probably at least 85, 90 bucks. And it was over well over a hundred. Let's see. It's the shading oh, off of the nursing shoe, and now 80, everybody has it. 8869. Currently, it was trading at $130. In July. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it was trading a hundred. And if you go back further, it was trading like a hundred and fifty in April. So I don't roughly know how people sit with these ring lights in front of them because it's burning my irises. So I might start <laughs> crying, but I'm not sad. <laughs> six months later, after that, it was trading for a hundred and fifty dollars. So let's see, Bristol Myers Squid in six months going to be a, over eighty bucks again. <laughs> like Crocs was that, and ran a hundred dollars a share. I don't know. Okay, let's see. It's the it's getting close to the end. It's pretty much the, towards the end of twenty twenty three. They projected that the market, many people projected the market would rebound in mid twenty twenty four, and mid to end twenty twenty four. So, uh, so I, I would, I would say I would say highs maybe in about seven or eight months, in my opinion, maybe. 
But uh, just just based off of that, yeah, just based off of like prior analysis of the overall market. So mm. maybe like seven or eight months, but I mean, six yeah. months is a good median there too. I don't see us in a bull market until beginning of twenty twenty five. Yeah, yeah, be, maybe be, maybe the beginning actually. Yeah, I should take that back. I'd say summer fall. 2025 summer fall oh okay so basically as we speak right now in two years things are gonna be like mm. load up mm. not financial advice that, that would be about what so how long would, uh that'd be like an average of what two and a half year bear market two and a half to yeah. three year bear market at sure. this point I'm not sure yeah that's, that's what it seems like Hey, we don't know what's going to happen. They got all this stuff with bricks, and then there's sure. people think that bricks is going to take over, but then people are like, China's economy. And I'm like, who really knows what's going on with China's economy other than the US, other than like higher governments? Because the numbers that are being released to us are questionable. Mm -hmm. I am. Is that when oh. Bristol Myers was 63? Or four, 64. We got to talk about uh, XRP because eventually we got to talk about XRP. I need to. Oh. So. Let me talk about that. Oh, let's finish up the video. Yeah, we're almost done. We're done, right? Yeah. That's Bristol Myers Squibb. Anything else you would like to add? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know. I just think it's uh, if we get oh no we didn't even get into the number numbers oh tell me about the number numbers the number numbers the act I mean we talked about like the stock itself but we didn't talk about like the company's oh, number okay. so right now um, well let's let's uh, let's get to Bristol Myers okay. By the way, I just saw Crocs earnings report. They're killing it. Oh my god! How is this possible? <laughs> it's so wild to me. I'll never forget when I first saw Crocs, like when they first came out as a nursing shoe, and I was like, "Oh, that's an interesting looking shoe." And they were like, mm -hmm. "It's really, really comfortable." It's like, "Wow, I'm glad that they're doing things for nurses," and now they're doing things for everybody. I don't. That's just so interesting. <laughs> I do not own a pair of Crocs, but, um, but I feel like everybody else does. <laughs> so, um, the real quick, just to wrap up the video, we're going to just take a look at their their numbers, mm -hmm. uh, some of what the company's doing, financial, real quick, and uh, come on, sir. Come so on, the sir. EP, wow, yeah, EPS, <laughs> EPS again. We have trailing twelve months is three seventy six. Okay. Earnings per share is three seventy six. As we speak for the last quarter, it's down significantly. EPS is at earnings per share one oh three. Um, here um, we're going to go into. Like I said, I don't know if you can see this with me. Uh, the company's financials. If you go into company section, um, here you have the actual, and then the estimate. So. Last quarter, 2023, they didn't um, even beat earnings. They were under earnings. Um, quarter three, 2023, they haven't released it yet. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure when their next earnings report. It's supposed to be actually October 26th. So in about a month, they're going to have their quarter three. No, I'm sorry. Forgive me. Their quarter, yes, their quarter three report in October 2023. Um, so look for that as earnings. Um, we are almost at all-time lows. We're at 52-week low. Um, the next key indicator um, is a return on asset. Uh, the last two quarters, they've killed it. Well, their assets have. Uh, quarter one... Um, up 
Return on asset is 2.37% for the quarter and for the year, uh, 97.5%. And then last quarter report was 2.21% for the quarter and on for the year, 57.86%. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. They're doing well. Yeah. Um, yeah, for the most part, yeah, they're doing pretty solid. Um, most of their most of their earnings are green. Um, if you go back at least the last five quarters, here for example, they have the income statement. Uh, their income for twenty twenty three of quarter quarter three of twenty twenty two was positive one point six one percent one point six billion um, was their income their net income up three point six percent. They had a negative to end twenty twenty four, but uh, here in twenty twenty three so far. Quarter one and two, they are up 76. And then the last quarter, uh, quarter two of 2023, they're up 45% at 2.08 billion. So you have a net income of 2.08 billion. Um, your return on assets got you up 57% um, on the year. Uh, their balance sheet is another important thing to look at uh their liabilities of quarter 20 of quarter two in 2022 uh, comparing the last five quarters they had a uh, hundred 67 billion in liabilities so their liabilities have dropped off six billion over the last five quarters but their assets have gone from a hundred billion to 93.5 billion so their assets are down about six point five billion, but so are their liabilities. So it's kind of broken even, but yeah. their liabilities have dropped off. So I, I guess that's. I mean, even though that they lost six point five billion in li in, in assets, they they lost an extra six hundred million in liabilities. So it kind of slightly equals itself out. The only mm-hmm. negative thing I'm seeing here is. Like I mentioned earlier in the video, their cash flow, which a lot of investors are like, like, uh, what's his name? The guy in Shark Tank, Kevin. Um, what's his name? He always mentions cash flow, cash flow, cash flow, cash flow. Um, Kevin, is Kevin it McCarthy? O'Leary? Kevin O'Leary. I always say McCarthy. Kevin O'Leary. It's an Irish name. Uh, Kevin O'Leary. Um, yeah, he's always like, cash flow, cash flow. You have to be yeah. cash flow positive. But these people are burning a lot of money. They have like dozens of drugs in the pipeline. FDA approved. They're growing their building. They don't have much cash flow. They're cash flow negative for the last five quarters. Wow. But, you know, they have be, 95. Uh-huh. That could be the where the weariness is coming from. Yeah. Yeah, the institutions aren't too fond of negative cash flow. <laughs> yeah. They say, um, but as somebody, some people don't want to invest at, in potential. Yeah, exactly. They, they, they. Uh, some of the institutions, they, they just invest off of, off of the numbers. Um, and then some people invest off of the the potential future. Like, oh, could this company, could this be the company that cures diabetes? Could this be the company that cures multiple sclerosis or cancer or of some sort or, you know, and boom, yeah. next thing you know, this is a trillion dollar company and the stock's trading at $500 a share. Yeah. So it's all speculative, but uh, the numbers are the numbers and uh, it's not looking too great right now, cash flow wise and. If you're looking at the stock price, you might be a little nervous to invest. But in my opinion, as someone who, uh, you know, be greedy when others are fearful and fearful when others are greedy, I would invest into Bristol Myers Squibb. It's a, uh, it's not some Joe Schmo company. It's yeah, not Myers financial Squibb. advice though. But yes, I yeah, I not financial advice. I'm just saying, in my opinion, uh, 125 billion dollar company that's opening. And uh, working with other companies like Pfizer and other pharmaceutical companies in South Korea, I don't see it going anywhere anytime soon. Mm. 
uh, let's just hope for a positive uh, net cash flow statement, and you'll uh, we might see a uh, eighty, ninety, hundred dollar for some higher squib. I think they're waiting to see some real positive inflow in twenty twenty four. So just based off of what their movements that we spoke about before, with you know the manufacturing and doubling down on research, and research takes time. So yeah. I'm thinking that we're going to really see maybe more. They're hoping for more positive inflow, like 2024, 2025. So it's like yeah. a long-term play here. They're, yeah. um, the the, the, um, the PE ratio actually dropped actually from Friday to, to, to Monday. They updated the numbers. They actually have dropped slightly. Since I wrote them down, the uh, PE TTM was 15.71. Uh, it's 15.71. Five six. The FWD, the forward, has dropped from seven point nine five to seven point eight eight. Not much, but it's dropped in literally one trading day. Okay. Well, Bristol Myers um, Squib. Bristol Myers Squib. Hey. Doing their thing. Let's see if it can get to eighty. I think it yeah. will. <laughs> this is well, an thanks. eighty dollars stock all day, yeah. in my opinion. We should uh, close up here. But yeah, thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. We hope we didn't ramble too much, especially me. I like to ramble. Rambling John. Well, it's all thanks right. Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate we appreciate your hard work. I appreciate your hard work. Your efforts. Mr. Myers Squib. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. I'm a stock nerd. Sometimes <laughs> I get ang sometimes I get angry and I rage text you like screw the market. And yeah. then two days later two days later I'm like Dividends and P ratios. Yeah. Because <laughs> I'm angry because I'm like, ah, I'm trying to make money here. You're screwing me. Yeah. So, like that. All right. Sometimes. Well, for everyone at home, thanks for watching. <laughs> Again, thanks for tuning in. If you could yeah. like, like, share, and subscribe, that would be great. If stay not, that's lovely. fine. Too. Stay, stay, stay safe. cool. Stay safe. I know. And have a good morning, a good afternoon, good and a great night. Later. See you in the next one. <laughs>
All right, let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. Ain't nothing to it, but to do it. All right. No, literally, if internet is a problem in 2023, you're telling me people went on the moon in 1969 when they didn't even have roll, when they still had roll up windows and cars for 25 more, 30 more years, but we went to the moon. Okay. Let's get ready to rumble. This Bristol Lost. Myers Squibb style. I mean, you know, some people believe that certain levels of technology are only reserved for the government and they incrementally release it to the public. And so, therefore, we would still have it took windows them 30 more to years to create electric windows. Where are you today? New Orleans? I've got a camera on my desk here, so I'm out living the, my best feel? life, I guess. <laughs> Who's that behind you? That's, um, I hand wash my clothes and dry them right behind my desk. See, that's a little towel that I hand washed, and that's my ladder that I dry it on conveniently behind my desk. My name is Ramon Salazar. I am from Malaga, Spain. I wish I was in Spain, maybe. Maybe. 30 more years for them to we create it, or 30 more moon. years for them to allow us to use it? They're Which all like, all right, guys, we're going to tell the public and show them we went to the top of the moon, but we're going to slowly release over three decades electric windows. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't it seem like complete bullshit when you really think about it? That's my step stool that I use for nothing since there's nothing I need to reach over there. But, you know, it's just for looks. I mean, that's consumerism, right? That's big. It's big papa capitalism, right? <sighs> and there's my plant. Um, I call I call him George because, I don't know, that's the first name that came to my head. And then this, and this table... I got it from Ikea. Okay. All right, and that's that. Great episode. Talk to you next time. I know. Have a have a nice night. Uh, the, another one in the books. Uh, cherries on top of ice cream scoops. And uh, have a great evening. <laughs> and sell the drugs, because nothing else works. Oh, gosh. I'm going to leave that to the pharmaceutical companies. They only get away with it legally. See? There you go. It ties in. Rugs. Right in. A slip and slide intro into the mysteries of the FDA. Bristol Myers Squid.